All right, guys, um, a lot of faces I don't recognize in here, and then a lot of faces I do. Um, sweetie, don't sit in the corner. <laughs> nah. Hey, I got back. She can come on, come on. Nobody sits in the, nobody puts baby in this corner. <laughs> That'll just make me feel weird. I mean, like, no pressure. If you were just zoning out and checking your email and you weren't really into it, like, I totally get it. This table makes a good chair. How many of you have already done traveled content on your site? Hey. I said, like, half the room. And how many of you are, right, what are we predominantly blogging about? One at a time. Food and travel. Food. Food and travel. But I started a travel blog right before I started blogging about food, and I couldn't continue. Anyway, it's a long story. Does it hurt? I know. <laughs> food and, and travel. Should have been more specific. Does it hurt? <laughs> food and fitness. Rock out. Food. All right. So I had this amazing story. I have an awesome story about how I got into um, food uh, and travel. I've been a photographer my whole life. When I was six years old, I decided I wanted to be a Nat Geo photographer. I used to flip through Nat Geo magazines. Um, taught black and white film photography when I was in high school. And then I went out and I got a real job because you got to put your adult panties on and you got to be an adult. And I hated life. But I didn't know I hated life because I was an adult and I just thought you paid the bills and this is life. So I... Uh, I did it, and I did it for a few years. Um, and I was good at it. I grew a couple of businesses, I did a couple of things. Um, and then one day I picked up my camera and I started this food blog, because my I was reading this food blog called Culinary Concoctions by Peabody at the time. It's now Sweet Peas Recipe. And I thought, this chick's hilarious as shit. I can do this. <laughs> and she's actually really funny. She writes Sweet Peas. Um, she's super snarky, and she bakes like a boss, and I can't do that. Um, and, uh, and so I started food blogging, and that was before food blogs had business plans and monetization and all of that stuff. And, um, and I picked my camera back up, and my first few photos sucked because I didn't care, and I just was trying to be snarky and funny and write some stuff about some food. And then as time went on, I realized I loved taking photographs. Duh. And so um, blog, the blog grew. Um, I'm spending more and more time doing it. I launched a second blog in 2013 as well, all focusing on meat, um, called Girl Carnivore. Launched that, got heavy into photography again, and then I decided probably in, I think it was spring of 2013, um, I decided that I was gonna act like there was no backup plan and that I was a photographer, period. And last summer, I left my full-time job that I had been a manager at for 11 years, and I've been freelance ever since. 100% freelance food and travel photographer and writer. So this is what I do for a living. People tell me you can't make money at it. I love it. I spoke to a huge conference not that long ago. There was like a whole room full of people, and people were like, but you don't make money at that. I was like, I pay my bills. <laughs> like, I'm here today. I'm dressed. What are you doing? Um, so 100% food and travel writer. I had this amazing story about how I went to Cambodia and I climbed a fucking mountain and I did really cool shit, but somebody took my thunder yesterday. <laughs> so I'm not gonna like, <laughs> so I'm not gonna even bother with that crap. Um, if anybody really wants to do it, apparently you just go to Southeast Asia, you climb a mountain, you come home, you're like, I'm gonna not do a job ever again. Um, <laughs> drink some Kool-Aid. All right, so we're not gonna go over that crap because like I said, half the room knows me anyway. In the past two years, I have been over to, uh, over traveled to over 20 countries, um, and since quitting my job last year, I have not been in one place. Actually, this is the longest I've been in one place. I've been in South Carolina since like the beginning of March, which is the longest I've been in one place since leaving my full-time job last year. So it can be done. It's a lot of fun. I love my life. My life is probably one of the coolest lives on that I know. It's a lie. I know some pretty rad people. <laughs> I know some pretty rad people. But the disclaimer I always give when I'm giving this talk to rooms full of people, when I look out into the crowd and I see all sorts of awesome people, beautiful women, hardworking ladies that have amazing partners at home and children and stylized houses that are clean and a pet that they feed. <laughs> you gotta, I always put it in perspective. Always put it in perspective. My life is not your life. 
and it's not going to be your life. I don't have a husband. I don't have children. I don't have a mortgage. And I don't feed my dog some days. So what I do is going to be different from the capacity you guys are doing this in. That being said, it's super rad and y'all can do it. And so I'm really excited to talk about it. So we can talk about the steps that I've taken to grow this. We've only got 45 minutes in here. Uh, I didn't know we were going to have a TV or I would have done the slides. We weren't sure. I didn't, I didn't know this thing. Life goes on. They're just like shiny, fancy pictures. <laughs> me doing stupid stuff in other countries. Um, or, so my other option was, I wasn't really sure how today was going to go. So we can talk more about what I did and how I got there and whatnot, and I can continue to talk about me, and that's weird. Or my other idea was to open this up straight up to a Q&A, because we're supposed to be targeting advanced bloggers here at Mediavine today. And when I speak with like kind of a pre-written script, unfortunately when you're speaking to a variety of people, you kind of have to be broad. So same thing, if I was talking about photography up here in front of you guys, I'd be being super broad and I wouldn't be able to address your individual needs because I'm talking to 15 of you. 17, close enough. <laughs> so how would you guys like to proceed? Do we want to open up straight to Q&A or do we want to go into a few more minutes about how I went from straight food blog to a travel writer? Yes. Your trips. Because cool. all the trips I've done, they've contacted me. I've never actually pitched anybody. Mm -hmm. today, but I, I, I would love to. I yes. Just don't know how to go so, place. yeah, so as, as food blogging was like peaking back in like 2013 before, uh, you know, Pinterest is booming and whatnot, yeah. So, emails start rolling in. Emails start rolling in. Emails start rolling in. And so, yeah, initially, yes, for most of my work, I would people would come to me and they'd be like, hey, we got this swanky new place. We want to bring you down for a few days and whatnot. Yeah, that's amazing. And this goes back to everything. Any sponsored work you do for any brand, any company, anything you do, like it's fantastic to come to a place and hang out for a few days and have it all covered. But if you're not getting paid, you're doing it wrong. That's everything. I don't care how fancy the grill is, how beautiful the purse is, you can't represent the brand unless they send you that product anyway. Product for trade is not work. Period. You're already good enough or they wouldn't have emailed you. They gotta pay, and they know they've gotta pay. The problem is, food bloggers are not getting paid. Check out what travel writers are getting paid, what Instagrammers are getting paid, what vloggers are getting paid. People are getting paid, the money is out there. Food bloggers are undercutting each other and limiting what they're worth, and it's a problem. So how do you go about that? Just like in sponsored you know, work, go in that next. I guess I feel like a thousand dollar trip is a lot it is, covering. but you couldn't have covered it if you hadn't gone on that trip, right? No. Exactly. I can't write about your resort unless I'm there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But on top of it, now you're talking, all right, so, so I have a trip coming up in a few weeks. I'm supposed to come to go to uh, Mississippi. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's a thing now. So anyway, it's, but it, it's right up my niche. It's, I'll be working with some chefs. We're going to be like doing some butchery. It's going to be awesome. I, can, I know that that's content for me. Like I know that that's content for my blog. But at the same time, it's a day traveling there, two days where we all know we're not going to sleep because we run before sunup answering the emails, we hang out all day, we got to come home, we got to write stuff, we got to check the metrics, we got to answer calls, we got to do stuff, we get bed two o'clock in the morning, we get three hours of sleep, we do it all again the next day, and then a day traveling home. That's four days of your time that you're not making recipes, you're not blogging, you're not styling photos, you're not writing fitness articles. That's four days. That's worth money. So I charge a day rate when I travel, in a travel capacity. And you've got to determine what your day rate is. It will vary from person to person. But my first question, my first reply is, thank you so much. Really love to talk to you. I'm going to be in, like I got an email the other day from this beautiful place in California. Hey, I'm going to be out in California in uh, July. It's going to be awesome. Might be in my neck of the woods. Hey, what are you talking about for day rate? This is my day rate. Let's proceed. The more you respond as if that is the way it should be, the more people answer you because frankly, it's, it is the way it should be. So they just come back with you and they tell you what their budget is. And do you, you usually ask for high budget or do you go ahead and state your I never budget? state my budget. You don't I state always, your rate I will for... never state any money until the client okay. has stated a budget first. Okay, so you just ask what's your <laughs> Always ask budget, what your budget is. Rate? Yep. Is kind of how you say it? Yep. I'm super excited to work with you guys. This looks right up my alley. What's your day rate, okay. right? 
what are we covering? What's your day rate? And what are the deliverables? And you want this in writing. See, a lot of the travel is a little bit vague. So you've got to figure out what you're getting paid, how you're getting paid, when you're getting paid, and what the expectations is from the, the, the client. Because if you don't know what your deliverables are from your client, because if you think food blogging is a niche, let, niche, let me just tell you, PR people in travel is like a smaller niche. And the moment you get on their shit list, good luck. So you got to know what the expectations are. Under promise, oh, always over deliver. So you're charging a day rate that's covering your time while you're there. Yes. Are you also charging for the blog post coverage or is that? Included? That depends on the rate that I'm going to charge them. So that's why I need to figure out what the deliverables are. So once we get into negotiations about the deliverables, right? So say you have a client and you're going to go on a, a, a three day trip. You're going to be there and whatnot. So now you've got, you're going to pay me period. But what is the work that you expect for the money you're spending period? And so from there, you're going to find out what your actual work is. If it's a blog post, if it's six Instagram posts, is it a story? Is it, you know, Instagram story? Is it Snapchat? Is it Twitter? Is it all of these things? So you have to determine what the rate is and what you're willing to do for that rate. But at the end of the day, you need to consider how much time you're actually spending on this. And frankly, you're probably not charging enough. Just know that. There's another lady in this room a minute ago that said, I'm going to reach out to a company and I'm going to say, hey, if you cover my food, I'll write about you. Not like three times that easily. Like if you cover my stay, I'll write about you. Worst they're going to say is you're coming here anyway. We already know it. We're not going to cover your stay. We'll give you a media rate, which is something every one of you can ask for immediately right now. Every hotel you ever walk into, what's your media rate? Every one of you are media. Um, and then you can negotiate from there. But always, always, always ask first because they're never, you're never going to get it first if you never ask. Second of all, every one of you in this room, minus the cameraman, sorry, is a female. You're not asking for enough to begin with. Women never ask for enough. Men will always ask for more and never feel guilty about it. Women are always like, oh, well, I'll just I'll talk about, I write about food, so I'm just going to, maybe you could cover my dinner. No! I had to drive to the restaurant, I had to sit there for three hours, I had to take photos, I had to hobnob, that was annoying, I had to drive home. No, you're not just covering my dinner. You're paying me 250 bucks to come sample your new menu, and it was three minutes up the road, and I wrote about it on one Instagram post. Dinner. And that's just because I was home on Tuesday. How do I know what to charge? Like I, 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 I mean, I know there's probably you know. Charge, yeah, yeah. No, because I change my I change my rates every chance I get. Dude, if I get like the hint that I can charge more, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know what to charge? I don't. I don't know what to charge. I wish that there was a formula for it. I wish that there was like blogging 101, right? It's not. Because everybody is different. And that's the one thing. Everybody is very, very different. Every one of our audiences is very different. So you have to figure out what your audience is worth to you and what your time is worth. You know, are you 15, like break it down, make an Excel sheet, right? Break down the hours you would actually spend on this. You're gonna spend four days at this resort. Then you're gonna spend six hours editing those photos and writing a post. Then you're gonna spend three hours marketing it on Facebook. You're gonna write a newsletter. I mean, how many days are you invested now? You're looking at what, 24 hours just in blogging content alone. How much would you be being paid an hour if you were sitting at a desk producing this type of content? Because it's probably not 10 bucks an hour. Do the math and find out. Because the other thing about this is we don't check out at night. We don't have the luxury of checking out at night. Like my friends come home at night, they punch out. They can do whatever the hell they want all night long. It does not matter if the office is on fire. They don't care until they walk in the next day. We're answering emails at 2 o'clock in the morning. What the fuck is wrong with us? Stop it. <laughs> Stop that. I set office hours on all of my email. Pisses people off. I tell every one of my brands I will answer you between 9 and 5, Monday through Thursday. <laughs> um, and then I don't. <laughs> so I'm a dick. Um, but so like think about that. Actually break down. Track your hours for a few of your posts. Like even if it's just bacon and dessert, track actual how much time driving to the grocery store, sourcing the unique ingredients, writing the post is, and you'll see how much time you're investing in this crap. And then break down what you're worth per hour. What's your audience worth? Your fitness audience or your gluten-free audience is valuable to the right brands to the right companies. That's money. 
Girl Carnivore makes more money than Pasta Sushi ever did. Pasta Sushi is pinnable content. It's got cupcakes on it. Girl Carnivore is not pinnable content. The numbers are down here comparatively. My money is like, boom, up here for Girl Carnivore because my brand is locked in and I speak to an audience. And that's what the brands want. Same as for travel. Are you a mom that's got kids that's gonna travel with to, to Atlantis and swim with dolphins? Are you gonna RV? your life? Are you rugged? Are you going to be outside running? Are you talking about fitness travel? What is your demographic? Because don't try to be something you're not. Your audience comes first in everything. So first and foremost, it's your audience. So you got to figure out how this works with you guys and your audience because it's got to be authentic and it's got to be real. I'm never going to be a luxury blogger. I, you could not put me in a fancy restaurant. I'd be like awful. I'd have to pick my nose or something. It'd be great. But like, but that's not my brand and that's not the clients I resonate with. And that's not who my audience is gonna resonate with. So first you need to make sure it's authentic and it fits before you're just like, I'm gonna write about hotels. Cause I want free stuff. Stop it, get paid. Two, figure out how it actually resonates with your audience. And most of you like, if most of you are food bloggers anyway, you're already talking about your life. Like your audience already knows who your kids are. They know who your dog is. They know the code word for like your boyfriend or your husband or whatever. Like they know it and they know your story and they love you. So it's a natural fit if it's a natural fit. I mean, likely you're going to take a girls weekend and you're going to hang out in Sonoma Valley and it's going to be cool. That's a natural fit because that's your speed. You're never going to be on a rock wall in Yosemite climbing El Capitan. That's for me. <laughs> like... That'd be bad shit crazy for the rest of you. Like there's, the, you know, you gotta make it work. And then you gotta find those brands that align with that value and your client's value, your reader's value. Because if your content isn't aligning with your value, it doesn't matter how awesome your post is because you won't get the numbers anyway. You can't keep the brands, period. Same for any sponsored post. So most, I think most of us are moms and we would like to travel with our families. And Bless your heart. Would. <laughs> <laughs> that was Southern of me. <laughs> with the dolphins at Atlantis and I'll see you later. But you would take your family. Right. And so how So why wouldn't you take your family? Well, well my question is, do you factor in feeding all of the, the, the well <laughs> the cost of Yeah, the, the cost of the family mm -hmm. or do you do you lump that in? Do you So once I obviously it, one room, I have a room if you're gonna Yeah, so you've gotta figure that out too. Feeding more mouths or you're Exactly. So you've definitely got to have that conversation with yourself and your brand as it grows. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and get a hotel stay in Atlanta and swim with dolphins and it's going to feed you five family and, and they're going to put you up in the, the penthouse suite tomorrow. Right. So you've got to build and you've got to take those steps, right? So maybe the first trip's a media trip because you were going to get media discount because you were going to go to Atlanta and swim with dolphins anyway. Yes, that's my point. All right, so first step is you get, you get in, you show the content, right? It's, especially if you don't have a travel section on your blog right now. First things first, if you don't have a travel section on your blog right now, put one up because you've been on a family vacation. You've got pictures, write about shit. It's there, write about the content you've already got. All the content you've already got. Don't use me as an example, I'm super lazy. I've been written like a travel post in like seven months on my own blog. <laughs> I've got like 90 of them, but I also freelance to other companies. Um, so find the, the way it already fits and a way you can already start to leverage it and work from there. Pitch it as if you're already a boss lady who travels to Atlantis and swims for dolphins for free. Mm -hmm. Already speak with that confidence, but know that you've got to work this in. And is it resonating with, you know, is the value in it for the brand? Because if you're new to this and you're a dessert blogger, they're not going to immediately understand how your audience is going to then be worth the money they're investing in you. So for me personally, it's all about like this sweet. So it's the sweet destinations. It doesn't necessarily have to be the sweet food, but the sweet experience. So that's how I've worked it into. Exactly, but that's my what you. Brand. But that's how you need to sell it too. Yeah. And that's exactly that's exactly honing in your audience, knowing your niche, and then marketing it that way. Right. But immediately, like my first thought is, well, this is a, a cake blogger. I'm the hotel, or I'm the hotel chain, or this person, or that person. How is our audience valuable to me? Well, I think, it, okay, so personally, my, my, I wrote about, like, again, again the, the sweet experience, the neat thing to go do, um, but if it's a resort like that, a lot of times they value their, their restaurant, their, their dining experience, their menu, whatever it is, and try to find what's unique or what their house special or that sort of thing. 
100% agree with you. I'm not arguing okay. with you. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> okay. I also think I th also think. You're doing it right then. No, I, and I also think Sweet Experience is super good branding. Like, roll with that shit. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I love how that ties in with okay. your blog too. I think that's exactly right though. But you've got to be able to resonate with that. So maybe you are going to go to a place, and you're going to stay somewhere, mm -hmm. and you're going to write a blog post that follows us up that's a sweet experience. Like me, I know I'm going to write five downtown bars to get drunk at in Charleston. Yeah. I'm going to write that post. I'm going to write the five donut places to find Exactly. <laughs> so maybe you don't just reach out to the hotel. Yeah. So now you've got multiple avenues, right? You've got the CVB. You've got the tourism board. You've got um, each donut shop. Now in a place like Charleston where they're a little bit trendy, they're not going to need your thing so much. Like this whole city's full of hipsters, mm. right? They don't need you. They got Instagrammers on flip. Like this is they got 90. Like it's a little ridiculous. So you got to leverage it, right? So like you're going to walk into Glazed and they're just going to roll their eyes at you. That's cool. You're still going to write about Glazed, yeah. but that little mom and pop shop down the street that nobody knows about yet, and they're just trying out and they're not on Eater's top 10. That's your money. Okay. So like yesterday, I went out for lunch and I found this little barbecue joint that nobody knows about yet. It's good stuff. I didn't stand in line up the street at the popular one. I went to the guy who's hustling still, who's passionate still. He's going to have a line next month. That's the guy. Okay. And that's who you talk to. And what's great about that is, in my opinion, that's better content anyway. Because you can Google top five donut places in Charleston. We all know to go to Glaze. Shit's good. <laughs> like, they know what they're doing. <laughs> but I guarantee you, five, six, seven streets over, there's another place and nobody knows about it yet. And it's your job to really give that valuable content. Okay. You're the expert. So essentially, your, your day rate would also cover all this uh, research that you're doing. It well. would. I mean, yeah. So if I'm getting paid X number of dollars a day, it's my time while I'm there. So my time while I'm there, however I want to spend it. I also make sure that when I'm in a place for a few days, I'm leveraging multiple angles. And this is where you do need to get intelligent and savvy and have your lawyer on retainer. Because once you get into travel context, you need to know what the travel agreement is. So I write for other freelance networks as well. So I need to make sure that if I'm Instagramming something while I'm in a place, I have not signed an agreement that says that my content produced on, in that place is owned by that company. Because that's not what I want. I want to be able to go to a place and talk about the place while I'm there for the reason I'm there while I'm building six other articles on other things I can sell later to other people or for my own site. So I might be in Saguenay Lac St. Jean talking about playing with Arctic wolves and epic snow sports because that's what I'm there to write about. But I'm also documenting food the entire time because I know that's going to fit in for my audience over here. So I'm already selling in my mind. I'm like, how can I market this multiple ways? So that's worth my time. It's worth my investment. So always have multiple outlets when you go to a place. Don't go to a place just for one thing. If you're not pitching six or seven stories, like you're already losing out on money. Hey. Sorry. Why are you sorry? <laughs> Shit happens. There's a chair back there. Oh, okay. I mean, nobody's sitting there right now. <laughs> A day rate. I don't like have to break down that it's my expenses, it's my so meal. Your day rate covers your stay. Yeah, so, so I'm going to make enough money. Room. Yeah, I'm going to make enough money that my time and travel is well covered. I'm also going to assume that they're going to buy me dinner once or twice, because they probably are. So I'm not going to pay for my meals while I'm there. Okay. If not, pro tip, Tinder's really easy. You can get a lot of free meals. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, I'm leveraging that shit too. Like, I'm not above it. Um, <laughs> But so I make sure that like, but that's all in my negotiation. So I'm coming to XY Resort in Charleston. It's beautiful. I'm here. I'm a food writer. I'm going to be talking about your sweet desserts or your, your gastro pub or your fitness. Uh, there's a really cool spot in Austin. I'll talk to you. Um, I mean, they put me there and it was like, yeah. And I don't write about massages and whatnot. It's weird. Um, but, um, so, so you're going to make sure that like your expect, once again, expectations and deliverables are very important with the client. So if the client knows they're bringing you to a place because they want you to experience their menu, you are not paying for food. Okay. Like that's silly. Why would you go to a place and then pay for food when you're there to write about the food and your experience? So your day rate is not necessarily separate from the hotel rate. 
I'm not paying for any of that. They're paying for that. I won't even see that bill. Okay, but I'm trying to clarify. And then in addition like you to. Come here, mm -hmm. And, it's, you know, and then in dollars a night. So they're comping you the room, but then they're also paying you yes. an additional day rate. Yes. And then if you write a blog post about it, they're gonna you're gonna pay yes. charge for a sponsored post. Yes. Okay. But that sponsored post might have already been factored into how I justified whatever day it was rate. I was charging okay. for the day rate. Okay. And so you've got to exactly, okay. exactly. So my sponsored post might have already been like, if I know that you want to post now, you want me to write an X number of word, X number of images post. Cool. That's going to reflect what I tell you my day rate is. Okay. Okay. But I'm never going to see the bill for the hotel or the food or anything like that. The the transfer from the airport, the plane ticket. That's not my problem. That's them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you just order whatever you want. You don't I mean, I'm not an ass about it. No, right. I don't order. Like, I don't order. order. What you would typically order. Other things I don't. Like, and that's a great thing. That's a great question. So other things I never order. I drink. I don't drink wine. But I will sample wine with dinner because you should sample wine with dinner and you should be able to write about it. So I'll sample wine with dinner. But when I go to the bar on my own, I buy my own drinks. I never charge the, the hotel for my drinks. Another thing I always do is I tip accordingly right. out of my own pocket. Because it is totally a douche move to not tip people. Like, let's be real. So what I always do is I always have enough cash in my hand to tip the host, the hostess, the hotel, whatever the person, at the full value of whatever the meal was. Because chances are that person's super nervous, too. Like, they know that your media, it gets weird. Like, I have restaurants in my hometown. Like, I can't walk into anymore. I'm like, it's 2 in the morning. I just want fried cheese. <sighs> I'm not here to write about you, damn it. Like, just let me have fried cheese, right? And they're just, like, bringing out, like, I'm like, stop it. But like, I always make sure that there's cash in my hand to make sure that you're showing gratitude to those people that are busting your ass for you. I also follow up with every one of my PR keep companies. So back to one of those original stories where like years and years and years and years and years ago before people were monetizing any of this stuff, I get sent to a hotel near me. And it's simply because I had the audacity to reply to a pitch and be like, hey, that's near me. Can I get a free hotel room? <laughs> and I did. And I got free dinner and it was awesome. And I wrote about it which this is before deliverables and negotiations and whatnot, but it was the first time doing it. It was new and shiny. I wrote about all of that. Once again, PR people, it's a small world. Last year, I was at an event with another client that I work for. I shoot events for this uh, company up in Pennsylvania. It's a managed property sort of event. They, they have shops and retail and resorts and chefs and that sort of thing, and they know me and they love me, so I go up and I shoot their events when they're having parties and stuff, and we all have fun. What I did not know was their marketing company is the same marketing company that sent me to this resort three years ago, four years, five years ago. It's been a while. I ended up shaking hands and having cocktails with them. They were so impressed with my work ethic then, before it mattered, that I have shot for them seven or eight times since then, and we now have a fantastic relationship. So I totally preach being good to people. I mean, you can't beat that. That's just like fundamental human right, right there. Just be good to people. Be good to all the people. Because this is a small enough industry that it matters. Under promise, always, 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 always over deliver. And so that's been a fantastic relationship for me. Um, and they think of me for other stuff. I mean, I had to photograph like an old folks home last year, but they knew I could do it. And I'm a photographer and I was in the area and that was a check and it took me two hours. Boom. Like, so you never know how you can leverage the contacts you already have or the ones you've already made. Yes? We could go back to very, very basic for those of us who are just busting into this and trying to get a few articles on our site. You mm -hmm. mentioned the, the media rate and hotel. I actually didn't even know that, so I feel really basic here. But, That's okay. Uh, so when you're asking for a hotel, are you doing that for even just your regular travel that you were just already planning to do? Like, yeah. Like, I'm going with my family to yeah. such and such. I just I'm a social influencer, rate, always. Yeah. Then what, what is the per, um, perceived expectation there? Hopefully they reply with you to a media rate. I don't like just like, I don't just like tweet them or I don't, I will call the front desk. I will find the manager. I will make sure I'm speaking to the actual person that matters, not the 1-800 number on the website for the chain. Okay. Um, a lot of these chains, a lot of these parent companies have, if you do some research, you go to their website, you do some digging, you can get on their media list and things like that as well. So you want to do some digging into these, these companies, these chains, and you want to find out what their list is, how to get on it, who your point of contact is. Okay. And then you tell them, like, yeah, I'm coming through this blah, 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 wherever I'm going on X and O date. Do you have a media rate? Okay. Another thing you can do, 
super savvy right here. Say you are traveling on the DL, you didn't ask for a rate and whatnot. When you check into a hotel, when you are actually speaking to the person at the front desk every single time, always ask, is that the best rate you can give me? Legally, they are obligated to tell you the truth. I don't know if that's legal. Don't quote me on that, lawyer, sorry. They're obligated at that point to give you the best actual rate. It's a good thing to have. So are they, what are they expecting? Is there an expectation on the part of hotels? Yeah, well, once again, even if I'm, so even if I'm emailing them, like, hey, I'm coming to XNO, I'm bringing my family, I'm gonna be in town for three days, I've traveled, this, this is my family's vacation spot every year, I'm gonna be writing about it on my blog, my blog gets XNO followers, blah, 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 or I'm gonna be sharing it on my Instagram story, or, so I'm already telling them what the deliverable is. Even if you're just asking for the media, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that being said, I have traveled in a capacity for like clients and whatnot where I, you know, it wasn't in my deliverables to talk about the hotel, so I didn't. Okay, so. I didn't forget oh, about you. Go ahead. Oh, all right. You Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I'm just now thinking about getting started. My blog is Life, Love, and Good Food, so hopefully I've kind of encompassed that in the name of my blog already. And I already booked on a trip this fall with my husband and another couple, and it's it's a cruise in the Mediterranean. So we Which have, line? Uh, Royal Caribbean. Awesome. Okay, so we haven't booked any of our excursions or any of the extra stuff. Uh, we haven't fully paid for the cruise yet, so I'm thinking, can I go backwards? I, you, I don't think you can go backwards. Okay. But you can leverage it forwards, and I would say if you're in any of these food blogging groups or you got foodie friends and whatnot, I'd put out there, who's got a point of contact with Royal Caribbean, because mm -hmm. they're out there and they do work with bloggers, okay. and you fit a very unique demographic for them that they need. Yeah, well, so this you're is gonna, gonna be all you know, like empty nesters and and exactly, and so for you and like cruise cruise blogging is like a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like a Reddit subreddit. Mm -hmm. So I would get in that. The only problem now is I heard on the news this morning that. Russia's sending a ship out. In Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> We're inside. Don't. So don't. That's the only problem. But A, don't worry about that. Yeah. B, um, but yeah, so you want to, A, so now, all right, so you got to think about this. I'm going on a cruise. Cruise blogging's huge. Let me find out what circle. I mean, there's 10,000 cruise blogging Facebook. There are people that make a living doing nothing but reviewing cruises. I would hang myself. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds boring but not boring for a vacation mm -hmm. I just don't get like people like that every week man that's weird but find out get into that the cruise blogging Facebook groups get into the find out who the point of contact is at Royal Caribbean make that relationship mm -hmm. because if it's too late to monetize this event that you've already booked and you're already planning anyway you make the relationship, you show great content, you're now on Royal Caribbean's list. And girl, they take more than one cruise out a year. Mm -hmm. And you'll see that a lot of the food bloggers that have done cruises with food lines, they're back. They do another cruise with the same company next year, next season, new new, new restaurant on a ship, new port or something. They, they bring you back. These people love you. I had that happen with Alaska. I took my mom on a trip and it wasn't, it was just purely a birthday trip for my mom. And I ended up writing about it. Mm -hmm. Going on a much nicer cruise back to Alaska, going up to Denali. Mm -hmm. So they reached out to you. Mm -hmm. Did you follow up to them? I'm sorry. Did you send a follow-up email, like sending all of your blog posts? And no, posts? I just posted it on my blog post, oh, and I Instagrammed it along the way, and. And they found you. They picked it up. Yeah. And there you go. Like, your value is there. Like, here's a person who already fits our niche. Like, she's already doing it. She already fits our niche. This is a natural fit to me as the PR person. Like, now you're not a stranger that writes about cakes. I'm not, like, I don't get it yet. You don't have to sell me. She already knows that the, she or he already knows that that's good content. I'm not telling you you can't sell it. You can totally sell it. But I'm saying, like, I can see why the, the person then reaches out. Yes. <laughs> like a maniac. I do, yes. So, yeah, I, I write for um, Matador Network, which is a travel network geared towards millennials. Like, uh, like yeah, it's called Matador Network, yep. Um, and whatnot. And yeah, that, 
man, if you think exhausting, like if you think it's like exhausting just pitching <laughs> normal stuff, yeah, you just pitch. It's the same line, same line. So you've got your idea, you've got your content, you send them two or three lines about it, why it would be a good fit for their, obviously, once again, like I'm not going to pitch a cruise to the Mediterranean to Lonely Planet. Like that doesn't make any sense. That's not their demographic. So make sure the 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 person, the the readership and the article content that you're trying to pitch and sell is geared towards the demographic. So can you double dip? I mean, you've been paid to go to this resort, write a blog post about it, whatever. Can you then pitch a magazine and say, hey, I'd like to write an article for you about the food that, exactly, whatever. exactly. I just said I was in Canada last month and I'm rolling around in the snow because I'm there covering extreme sports, but I'm taking photographs of every meal I eat. Once again, read your fine print. Make sure you have not signed anything that says that you, yeah. the content you developed during this trip is exclusively the rights of the people that sent you. And for the most part, it's, it's not. It's publicity for them. Well, and for them, well, cause you're not probably not going to sign with the, the, the place. You're probably going to sign with PR company that works with place or PR company that's working with event or thing or yada, 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 right? You're not signing with France to go to France. Like, you're signing with, like, an, you know, a thing. Um, but that's why, so for me, I'm always looking at multiple content. You cannot, and it is super unethical to pitch the same thing to multiple brands at the same time. Like, that's just not cool. But can you pitch a different story, a different experience to multiple brands? Hell yes! Leverage the shit out of that experience. Like, make it. Get, it, get as much mileage out of that experience as you can. So, yes. So, when you pitch, how are you finding, who, so like you said, France. So, you're pitching to a... a Convention Visitors Bureau, you're pitching to a Chamber of Commerce or something? I mean, Maybe. Or I'm finding a PR company that's representing a province in France that happens to be like where I want to go or do something I want to do. So I will stalk down. I will trickle down like as far as I can go to find that person. Because there's a person there. Mm -hmm. Every one of these emails you get that's like, exactly, every one of these emails you get that's like, try my granola bar. There's a person there. Mm -hmm. Find that person, reply to them, and talk to them like they're a person. So that's what I was going to ask you, like, how do you find all these, you know, I mean, I have PR reps that contact me for stuff. Mm -hmm. how, how do you go about finding other ones? So I'll start digging. Like, if there's a place I want to go, I will stalk the crap out of their network. I will stalk their Twitter. I'll stalk everything. And then I'll start stalking the PR company that represents them. I'll start stalking the individual. I'll get down to the person that manages their account. Another thing I'll do, because I have great relationships with the people that I've worked with, I'll email my friends. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go in Dallas in four days. You know anybody in Dallas? Yeah, I do. Let me email you. Boom, let me make that introduction for you. Like I said, this is a small world. If you're good to people, they're going to be good to you. So same thing, that same company that I worked with years ago didn't know it was a thing. I was like, hey, I'm going to go to Austin. She was like, dude, I got this contact in Austin. I ended up at a spa. I got like some four-hour massage with some prickly pear. I think it mattered. I don't know. It was really weird. I told the lady, I was like, look, this is weird. <laughs> like, can we just talk about stuff? And then we actually ended up talking about stuff. And then she gave me a hug, and I was like, but I'm still naked. <laughs> No, I'm just not a luxury blogger. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, but I would never have had that experience had I not asked for the thing that I didn't think I was worth. It's great. It's good stuff. So, hey. 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 So how did you move from just asking for media rates to day rates? Ask, like, if I pitch a hotel because for media rate because I'm going on a trip with my family, I feel weird saying, okay, so I would like a media rate. Oh, and also, like, how do you... So it's not, one? it's not one or the other. It's, it's, it's well, I'm sorry, it's not this and that. It's, it's one, one or the other. other. Okay. Exactly. And so, like, now you're, you're striking up a conversation with the PR person, right? Okay. You're, you're, you're now having a natural dialogue with the PR person. You've introduced yourself. They think right. you're fun. You've, you're not cold emailing this person. You're not being like, hey, you manage Texas. Can I get free shit right. and paid? <laughs> Period. They're like, delete. <laughs> right? <laughs> Boop. No. So you've already introduced yourself. You'll be like, hey, this is my blog. I get this many readership. I'm working on building my family travel content. Your resort's an excellent example of that for my, my thing. This is what I'm planning. This is my itinerary. These are the dates I'm going to be there. I would really love to feature you on my blog because my blog's super valuable. Right. And here's another thing, guys. Like, true story. The travel writers and the, the Instagrammers and whatnot, their shit's good. Food bloggers have readership on lock. Like, our readership is exponentially bigger than the rest of them. So you have to sell that. Do not be afraid to tout your numbers. 
travel bloggers numbers are way lower. Why is that? Ah, Pinterest? I'm totally blaming Pinterest. Cupcakes? People don't travel, travel as often as they cook. Exactly. Yeah. And I just you think... Cook every day, you travel every once in a while. Yeah, and I also think like there's a... I think food blogging was probably a thing, an established thing before travel blogging became a thing. So I think we just had better momentum going into it. If that makes sense. I think we already just had like a little bit of a wave. That being said, they came in and got paid better. So like we all got to get on the same surfboard. <laughs> it's going to be a crowd of little surfboard. <laughs> I think you've got to think about how that fits with your audience. So how are you going to naturally put travel into a southern kitchen? So like Girl Carnivore is an all meat based website. How am I going to talk about travel on an all meat based website? Oh shit, who does not love coming to a place and eating barbecue? So the first thing I do when I come to a place is I get on Instagram stories and I'm like, oh my god, Girl Carnivore is in Charleston. Tell me who's got the best hot dog. And I'll tell you what, people eat that shit up. I get so many replies. I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> but it sounded really good because I already knew where I was going. Like, I already had a list. But now they're like, they love you. They love Southern Kitchen. And you're going to come to their town. And you're going to go, where's the best biscuit in Nebraska? <laughs> and they're going to go, <laughs> and they're going to go, yeah, dot, dot, dot. I could be wrong. Nebraska might be amazing. I don't know. But do you see what I'm saying? You've got to, like, same thing. Like, you've got to think about this. How does this transition naturally and harmoniously with your blog? Or are you forcing a fit that doesn't really exist? Are you just trying to do something because you think it looks really cool? Or is it, I went to Nebraska. I did this really cool stuff because everybody knew Nebraska was a super hip place to be. I mean, if I'm, you know, maybe... Boise is awesome. Who knows? Different state. You know what I'm saying? Like well, see, unexpected. That we're empty nesters now, so I travel now more than I cook. So I don't have as much time for the cooking end of my blog, and so I'm like, but, well, can I leverage what we're actually doing now? Yes, definitely. But maybe it's about like maybe you travel and you experience a different flavor because you're Southern Kitchen and you go to New York and you have something that's uniquely Northern. You bring the experience home, you write about it, and then you cook something in your own kitchen that resonates with the audience, and yet you're telling them about this story. So maybe it's an ingredient. Like, I'll look for, like, unique ingredients and stuff like that. I'll buy a jar of something that I can't get at home, and I'll bring it home. So for me, I'm already building that sixth or seventh post. Like, something as easy as buying, like, when I was in Canada getting frostbite in negative 40, um, they are known for their wild blueberries in blueberry season. Apparently, when it's not snowing, it's gorgeous. Um, for like what three days um so they get so i bought i smuggled home jars of natural delicious blueberry juice because in my mind i already know that seven months from now when it's warm out that's a cocktail post for me and i'm going to reference the article that i sold to a travel network that's going to bounce back to that i'm linking within myself my audience grows and i'm getting more content out of it i'm stretching the mileage of the one thing i did yeah could you give a real example i heard this very similar thing from some travel bloggers at another don't Wait, I'm not making this shit up. No, they're like, don't take a trip unless you've got, you know, three or four at least hours exactly. for that content. But I think for those of us who really aren't in this thing, we don't have all these content or contacts with all these different avenues. It's kind of hard to understand or picture. Like, could you give a, an example from one of your trips and be like, okay, I, I did this trip and covered that, and then I went to this. So, like, you know, how exactly. Like, so this trip, okay. right? So this trip, have you gone out and eaten anywhere? Um, yeah, it, it was no. terrible. Well then, A, you did it wrong. <laughs> it's hard to see. Like, All right, well, tell us where it was so we know. It was Sticky Fingers Barbecue. <laughs> I think that's a really funny name. Because <laughs> I'm an adult. It's one of the only places that has a gluten free menu and they can prepare safely. So we were, you have to. And it was really bad. But you know what? That is like, I would totally like, I would be honest with my readers. I did on Instagram. Yeah. Because I had already Instagram. And TripAdvisor. And everything. And so they're thinking I'm Exactly. But that's okay. So. You're allowed to be honest with your audience. Like you are flat out allowed to be honest. I will value an honest review 
more than anything else. And so like my first thing when I get to a restaurant, I'll ask somebody what your favorite dish is and they'll tell you like 90 things because they're like, think they're supposed to sell you the menu. And I'm like, I go, like, what's the one thing you wouldn't eat? And they're like, oh God, that. And I'm like, cool. If I could, if, just to share on that. So we asked the server who came up, we're like, do you guys make sweet tea? Do you make anything house? Do you guys do like homemade sweet tea? Do you make <laughs> but that's okay. He thinks that McDonald's does have the best sweet tea. Does it really? Yeah. I don't know that it does, but I'm saying like. But like, and that's a Southern thing. <laughs> but that's that's okay though, because like his perspective is he he doesn't know that you're a well-traveled food writer with a really defined palate. Like that dude really does think McDonald's sweet tea is the shit. <laughs> and it's a buck, right? Like it's a buck. Like for your value, it's like a big giant cup too. So I mean, like. <laughs> but that's that's but that's 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 okay and you like bat your eyes and you giggle at them and you ask the nest dude like the first thing I do so I was being interviewed for a magazine not too long ago I had like this huge spread in this magazine it was really weird and this dude had like you know he sits down and starts talking to me and he was very dry a political reporter and whatnot really weird dude and he just wasn't getting it he wasn't getting this thing it was like life it sounds really weird so you just travel places and you take pictures of shit. Oh, I know it sounds so fucking easy. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have no toenails right now, guys. Like, true story, I got frostbite in Canada because I was above tree line in negative 40 in the middle of February taking photos because my job is to take the photo no matter what. I get paid to do shit. I did shit. The air was freezing in front of us as we were breathing, so my whole face was covered in ice. And I had serious frostbite. It was so disgusting, I didn't Instagram it. <laughs> and like, I'm thinking like, this is content. Oh, this is so content. <laughs> oh no, like it was so, it was like so disgusting. I couldn't take a picture of my feet, like to send my besties. Like it was that kind of gross. By the way, frostbite's not fun. Um, like when it's that gross, that's bad. It's bad. But, and then I was like, damn it, you missed a content opportunity. I'm so pissed at myself for not taking photos of my grody ass feet. Um, I totally forgot where I was going with that. There, 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 there. Where was I at before I got to talking about really gross feet? Huh? Oh, yeah. So my job was to take the pictures, like, no matter what. And so, like, I did it. And that's, that's, you know, I got some gorgeous shots, but it was crazy hard. Um, Totally got off on a foot tangent there. I'm really sorry. Apparently, you should also not devolve the foot tangent on the first Tinder date. Apparently, it's weird. <laughs> I was like, well, I figured you ought to know what you're getting into. All right. Have you been to a TEDx conference? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any tips for speed networking? I'm going to my next one. This month? This one coming up in Alabama? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go to that one, too. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm not pumped about it. Well, I mean, it's literally. It's oh, no. And I think it's like. So if you guys don't know what TBEX is, it's travel blogger, yada, 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 something. They do what's called speed dating. And I hate it. I hate it. So you, they put all the brands in one room, and you can make appointments, and you, you get on, you get your blogger dashboard, and you're making your appointments and all that. All right. So you make appointments, you get 10 minutes, and you sit down, and you talk to dudes for like 10 minutes, and they're like, all right, cool, we're going to follow up. And then you get like 9,000 business cards. It's Totally, I just filtered the sentence I was going to say. It's totally not fun. Um, and it's not authentic, and it's not real, and I don't think that's the way good relationships are made. So how do you make it authentic? So when I get there, I do the same thing. Uh, so I, like, <laughs> I'm a cocky-ass motherfucker. <laughs> that's what I do. I, like, hang around, and I, like, wait for all this shit show to happen. And then I just, like, walk up and actually talk to people like they're human beings. Can we hang around you when we're there? Totally. <laughs> I'm pretty, like, totally, please do. Because um, I hate... Like, I'm never going to walk up to somebody and be like, here's my business card. I get X no followers. Like, I just, I don't want to be spoken to that way. So, like, like last year, I was watching this whole shit show happen. Or two years ago. I was Fort Lauderdale. I did. The reason I say I'm sorry is I'm really disappointed in their, their brand list this year. I think their brand list is super short. And I'm like, dude, that's not even cool. I don't, but on top of it, like, that's their job. Their job is to bring media in. And it's like, seriously, like Alabama, Mississippi, Alabama, Mississippi, Massachusetts, Alabama. I'm like, what the shit? I'm not paying to come to a conference to network with Oklahoma, Alabama, Mississippi. There's like one France and one Scotland, Ireland. Ireland. And a few Canada, too, which are good resources. Um, so target, have that list. Know who your target demographic is, right? I'm not going to sit down with Laura Davis NPR because I'm not a tra travel luxury blogger. 
But I watched the shit show happen. Everybody's like running around, cards being shoved in people's faces, numbers being sat down. I'm like, I get 100,000 followers. What can you do for me? And it's just like this, this thing. And it's like super aggressive and I don't like it. And I get that that's good for some people. It's not my thing. So meanwhile, I'm just kind of watching. And this one chick in the back corner has not had a chance to eat her breakfast yet. Because she's the only one at the booth that day. And like people are not letting her breathe. And she's trying really hard because her job is to be there and to get as many business cards as she can and talk to people and take notes on her potential clients. And so I just walk up to her at one point and I was like, why don't you go take five minutes? I'm going to sit here for you. And she just looked at me. It was like, oh my God, thank you. And she went to the bathroom and she was able to eat her biscuit that she had gotten at 7 a.m. and it was 11.30 in the morning. I'm never going to write for that company. It's a travel luxury blogger. But I treated her like a human being. Because of that, she's willing to go and talk. And I don't do that because I was looking for anything. I truly just felt bad because this young lady had not had a chance to eat her biscuit. Like, I was like, this sucks. Like, this sucks for everybody at this point. So treat people like you want to be treated. So I don't sit down and go, hey, send me to Great Britain. Because that's not a good relationship. I sit down and I actually try. And you only get 10 minutes, so you've got to do this super. Like, you've kind of got to have a script in your head, right? Like, have a script in your head of, like, how you're going to be a person that stands out. Once again, if you're a food blogger and you've got good numbers, you can already leverage that. We went around earlier, you weren't in the room. I don't know if you're a food blogger or not. I'm sorry. There you go. You might have great numbers. I'm not sure. But um, try to leverage that. But don't, I would say try to be different in that I wouldn't walk up, shove a business card in somebody's face, and try to like instantly make a deal. Get names, get a few good things about them, get a reason for them to like you, and then follow up in an email with a pitch but follow up within the next week. Because 9,000 other travel bloggers are following up with emails immediately too and you've gotta to get through that waft of shit. So what I also do is then I take all those business cards, I put them in an Excel spreadsheet, I take notes on everything we talked about, right? Those little fun facts about people. I have a system of remembering people. I'll, re I'll ask you your dog's name or your pet's name. Once I've got that, I can meet you six years from now. And that file comes up in my brain and I know you and you really want to make somebody feel good and love you, ask them how Fluffy is doing. Because they suddenly think you are the bee's knees. But that's like my way of remembering people, is, is what that human contact is. So take a note, take Excel spreadsheets, and then write when you followed up with them. And if you really had a great connection and you really thought it was a good partner, have a schedule of when you're going to follow up again. Because they're going to get back from TBEX and they're going to be followed up with 10,000 other emails as well. And they're, not, and they're going to be busy as shit and they've got to report to their boss and they've got to justify all this and they're going to need to go have a Xanax with their wife and I totally get it. So then like three weeks from then or three months from then, hey, you know what? I loved our conversation at TBEX Alabama. I'm going to be traveling through blah, 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 blah. I'd love to add some content. Can I add an addition? Could we consider maybe me bouncing to your wherever at the same time? depending on the demographic of the individual you're speaking to. The older, the more likely. You get it. Thank you. I was just thinking that. So yeah, um, it's not going to work on some of these CVBs that are like just a bunch of kids that are interns that are there for six months and then move on to the next CVB that move on to the next CVB. But like there's like MSL Cruise Line always has older people sitting at their um, table. And I don't mean that rudely, but like that's going to be a demographic that you can speak to more authentically. A more mature. Exactly. And they're going to appreciate that more. Negative, you're good. Oh, okay, so next month I'm going to Utah for another conference. I it's have... rad. <laughs> Are you going? Or... No, it's just their hashtag. Use it. Oh, it's rad. Okay. Well, Utah is rad. Sorry. <laughs> That's their Utah hashtag, really? Red. Yeah. Utah is rad. It's one of them, but yeah. That's pretty funny. Okay, so I, I'm going there for a conference only for like three or four days, but I'm there for a whole week. I bought my Airbnb, but I haven't um, done anything with like uh, flights or anything out there. Like, what would you, what's the first thing you do when you know you're going to a place? You haven't bought a ticket yet, but you have to be there for a conference, but. What's the first thing I do? Yeah. Change my profile location in Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> so I can already be scoping out possibilities. If you think I'm joking, I'm not. <laughs> um, what's the first thing I do? So I'll start researching what it is I want to write about. Okay. So is there anything that you, like, you contact to? Like, so like, exactly. So if like, I'm like, I'm going to go to Utah, and I'm going to write about craft breweries. You're probably not at Utah, never mind. Mormon jokes. All right. So, <laughs> by the way. There's more than you think there. No, I'm, I know. I'm not sorry. Mormons, I mean, no, there's a lot of everybody. Like, don't get that wrong. There's no hatred towards Mormons. Please don't take it that way. 
or a craft brewery. But my point is like, so you're like, okay, but that's a good segue for my blog, right? It's a fit. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go to Utah. I know I'm going to hunt out. I will make this more natural for me. I know I'm going to hunt out a barbecue joint, right? So I'm going to hunt out a barbecue joint. So I'm going to first, I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is go on Google's and I'm going to Google's the barbecue joints and I'm going to have a list and then I'm going to find out who the person is and then I'm going to start making some content and I'm going to start talking to the people I know that might know the person and I'm going to start leveraging it that way. So I'm going to have five or six articles already in my mind because also this is like they said, if you don't have five or six articles in your mind before you get there, you're not going to take the notes you need to take. Five or six articles for where? For your own or you mean for all these places? All of them. All of it. All of it, because if you can't sell it, it's still going on your site. Yeah. It's still content. Yeah. But you might as well have five or six intentional plans before you get there. Okay, I have a quick question. So you're seeking out the barbecue joint that nobody knows about that's going to become really popular after you write about it. Because I'm awesome. Because you're awesome, right. But the person who owns that barbecue joint may be struggling. Exactly. And he's probably not paying you, but... That's okay, though. Okay. Because sometimes you're going to do things like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're going to be so moved by that individual. At least I am. I don't know. I love people. I like, I'm a super authentic, real person. Mm -hmm. And I do what I do because I love to do it. And I think that resonates. And so I am going to find the barbecue joint that's a mom and pop shop that is a real family that's struggling. And you're damn right I'm going to talk about them for free. So you're going to contact them, though, ahead of time? Yeah. So or like yesterday, like I'm, I'm checking out and the chick, the little girl ringing me up, young lady ringing me up is like, and I was like, what's the best thing? And she's like, this, this, and I was like, cool, what's, you know, what's the best side, this, and this. She's like, are you with the newspaper? I said, no, I'm a, some freelance writer, so I'm passing through. I said, and this is what I do. She brings me out my food, but like, and she's like, I quit, cool, I'm bringing out, like, instantly the proprietor's coming out, mm -hmm. right? Because they're so thrilled that, like, you came to their spot, right? That's a connection you've made for life. And you're showing something super authentic and super real to your audience, and you've done a good thing, and you've talked, and, like, the CVB is going to see it, and all of that, like, so yeah, there's moments when I Instagram shit that I'm not getting paid for. It's because I genuinely love people. And like I, in my niche in barbecue, it has paid off. Last year in Austin, it was disgusting. Like you'd have thought I was like princess brisket. <laughs> it was really bad. I could not walk into a restaurant and not have a backstage tour, a hug from a dude, being fed everything. Like handed like it was disgusting like it was like meat sweats to a different degree like it was a little bit like I left the airport like I never want to see brisket again <sighs> it was it was really gross um but my point is like you've become the authority in that you're genuine you're coming from a pace of like real love and real compassion about what you do and that resonates to all your audience and so like because of that and because I do come from a place of like honest authentic and educated like people love it and they love that I'm there talking about something that they've worked so hard to build. So hard to build. And that's like, I don't know, that's also like super humbling and I think it's really cool. Okay. I have one more question. Yep. That made me think about it. So what about flights? Flights are the hardest thing to get comped, okay. in my opinion. Flights, like going to a direct, like if you go directly to Southwest or directly to Alaska Air, directly to Loft, uh, that's the hardest thing to get comped when you're starting out. That being said, if I'm traveling to a place to cover a thing, they're covering my travel, okay. period. So that's not me, that, that goes back into them covering my travel expenses. I do not travel anywhere without my travel expenses being covered. Okay. So, and that's like as simple as this thing. Like I said, I've got a thing coming up in Mississippi. It's an event, four day chef. I could drive there, be 10 hours, all right? So 10 hours at the government rate, that's 57 cents a mile. That's $870 round trip. You wanna just fly me? Well, yeah, they wanna just fly me when I bust it down that way. <laughs> Duh, thank God. <laughs> 10 hours through Alabama sounded like fun. <laughs> totally reenact that BBC Top Gear episode. <sighs> no, no, you got it. Thank God. <laughs> oh, I know my demographic. All right. <laughs> so, I think we have questions. I don't know, maybe we have questions? Oh, we don't have, all right, anybody got questions? Well, I was just wondering, going back to her's Going to Utah, I'm actually probably going to the same conference. You just kind of, when you're heading to a new town, you mentioned reaching out to the restaurant. Yeah, CVB. What else might you do? Oh, same CVB? thing. Like, so, yeah, so same thing. Actually, sorry, I didn't mean to totally derail there. Go to call your hotel. Um, there's contact at Airbnb too. That's definitely, they have like representatives and they have brand ambassadors, but reach out. What, what's the worst they're going to say? No. 
What's, I mean, at the end of the day, what's the worst they're going to say? Home away right now. I just got a, one of the companies you're all teamed up with got email yesterday because of Coachella and home away is partnering with Coachella. So they're looking for influencers there. So if you're staying at home away, so this, it's out there. The idea of like, hey, I'm going to be in Utah for this event with this hashtag that's going to get X and O followers. Find out who the, the contact at Airbnb is. Airbnb just acquired another company too. Yeah, you can Google their hashtags. Um, Airbnb just acquired another travel network too. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'll try to find the email for you, follow up with me, because that's another company Then I would also then go, well, they acquired this company that I know writes content, so they're obviously gonna be folding that into their program somehow. How can I leverage this? Okay. So it's 99.9 hustle. Did I answer as many questions as I could? Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much.